Morning everyone. Welcome back to the mill. It is about, I don't know, 7.30 in the morning or something like that. <laughs> it's 22 degrees outside. And we're going to get to milling up this uh, hard maple or sugar maple or rock maple, whatever you want to call it, log. Uh, this one's been sitting around for about two years. This is the other half of the larger one we did in a previous video. Uh, it's got a good deal of spalting in it, and of course, as most maple does, it's got some good figure. We're not dumping water this morning. <laughs> At 22 degrees, I don't need to be uh, icing my mill over. So, we're not going to be dumping water on the, mill t on the logs today. Instead, maybe on the really interesting parts, as you can see, we've got this one already uh, trimmed and ready for slabbing. We'll spray up the interesting parts with a little misting spray here. That'll, that'll bring out enough detail without soaking the whole mill down. But, yeah, I got a little bit of ant damage here. That'll be nice uh, possible epoxy fill if it's not all falling apart in there. And uh, down through the middle, I'm sorry, down through the middle we pick up some of the uh, blue stating. I haven't had any metal in this one. This was an upper part of the tree anyway. Odds of finding metal up here a little, a little slim, but still a possibility. I've found cables up high in trees before. <laughs> uh, we will be picking up some branch uh, figure up in this area up here. We have a one that came out this side of the log, the top side here, but there is also one coming out the side, so we'll be picking up some of that crotch figure soon. Again, some cool coloring down in this end of the log. <laughs> A little spalting, a nice bark inclusion down here. Up here is this uh, the crotch of this tree again, having to trim it narrow for the uh, wood miser LT35. But trim as little as you have to and keep as much alive edge as you have to. But again, out here on this end, some nice spalting coming through. Again, the uh, bark inclusion here which is actually sealed on this end sealed on this end then opens up again in here so again a nice chance for some epoxy fill to go on here and blow all that out of there there's sawdust and whatnot down in there that'll look pretty nice that may open up a little more on the next cut we'll see but and this is just going to be the edge grain, but we'll pick up spalting on that as well. And see that pop right out with a little water on it. But looking good. I don't know if we're going to find much curl in here. We'll find out as we get down into the log. But again, 22 degrees, and it is. Let's see if I can check the time here. Ah, 7:45. So it was pretty close. Well, let's get uh, let's get camera set up, get the mill set up, and warmed up, and we'll get the sawing. Sawing some spalted maple, hard maple, and uh, it didn't get any warmer yet.
as always, let's get a look at what we got here. Hey, this is just a mirror image of what's up on the mill yet. This is what's down on the uh, loading arms. And uh, it froze. Our spray bottle. I don't know, I thought it froze. There we go. Here comes some spalting. Really nice. And even when the spalting goes away, there's that bark inclusion running all the way down through here. That's going to be a nice chance for some bow tie work or epoxy fill or something like that. Just blow out, blow out all the dirt that's down in there and go from there. Sure, what that is, just some staining, spalting, something going on there. A little bit of a curl going on out here. Picking up some uh, leaf shaped branch knots in there or something. <laughs> Man, just all kinds of good stuff going on in this one. Then on this end, it looks like the ends on these are what's spalted the most. Yeah, that blade's not doing the best. I'm running it slow. When you're cutting that wide, running it slow keeps you from getting dives in it, but let me get the chatter, blade chatter. Plus, it's probably a little dull. We did a uh, big maple, not a maple, I'm sorry. We did a big uh, hickory, or no, uh, red oak slab just before this. So Here's a little bit more of that insect or ant damage down here. Let's pull that rod a piece right out of the center. And a little natural hole going right through there. Again, nice chance for some epoxy fill work. Some spalting out here on the ends, but a little bit of the blue staining, looking good. And of course the one on the mill. The one on the mill is the mirror image of what we just flipped off down there. So nice stuff. Maple always seems to come out nice. I don't get near enough of it. Now, I could have more, but I want it hard maple. And I got this, this is the only hard maple or sugar maple that I've been able to get lately. So, but again, still looking good. There's the knot showing up here. A little bit of figure around that one. And again, all the nice spalting coming in down here. This wood is Still solid. It's not punky yet, which is right where it needs to be for spalting. So, and again, bark inclusion at the hole there. Good chance for uh, more epoxy fill. Let's get uh, this one flipped off of here and take a look at the next one down. And our next cut down here on the loading arms. Again, we're Continuing with the spalting down at this end, picking up some new stuff down along the sides. There's our bark inclusion opened up here. Clean that out. Looking good. The crotch feathering is supposed to be in here. We're losing to the bark inclusion, but the bark inclusion is still really cool. A little bit of feathering as we move down into here. Neat coloring here again with the browns. Let's see if I can shatter that. A little bit better. That's ah, better. Nice. Sun's still at a low angle this morning. And here we're picking up a branch here with some figure around it. Almost looks like some sort of praying mantis or something. <laughs> imagine what you could imagine. Uh, just it's amazing what you could imagine in these uh, in these slabs. I'm picking up another knot here, a little bit of figure around it. Not a whole lot of figure down at this end. And some new spalting showing up along here. That's pretty cool. And here's where I think we have the most figure and uh, and uh, just we got some knot here. We've got a little some kind of bark inclusion or just coloration. That's just color there. That looks pretty cool. A little bit of curl showing up along this edge here. I think that's going to get better as we get down through the cuts. But and uh, we have our blue staining down along here. So let's get into that next one and see what we can see. Okay, last cut for this round. Still plenty of spalting down at this end. Right here where our 
big long bark inclusion is. So cold I can't speak properly this morning. Still continuing down. I don't, it's not really getting any bigger, the spalting down at this end. But it's still there. Very nice. It's just the cool colors. I think we're pretty much to the pith of the log now. Just picking up some of these very early branch nubs. <laughs> The little tiny ones that were on the tree when it first started growing. I think this right here about is the pith right there. This may not turn out to be the best slab of the stack because of the pith being right in it, but hey, I'd butterfly it together or bow tie it together, whatever you want to call it. Man, really nice. I said earlier in the video, we're not dumping water on these. It's too cold out here this morning. Be working in an ice block if I do that. But looks real nice. Let's get, uh, we got one, two, three, maybe four more cuts to make. Three to four more cuts to make, and uh, this log will be done. But uh, let's get set up and get this thing finished up. Let's take a look. It's getting better. Okay, on the loading arms. Nice. Our spalting's back. I'm not spraying this with water. <laughs> I don't have my spray bottle with me. Yep. You know what? I'm going to get it. Hang on one second. Now the spalting pops out a little more. Really nice. Picking up another a new knot in here and... That crotch feather is starting to come around and next to that bark inclusion. Yeah, it goes, there it is. All the way up along here. Very nice. Continuing down into here. Another coloration bark inclusion. Something going on there. And just your standard brown streaking that goes through maple. As we go down through the rest of the log here. Still some of the very early wood here with the very early tiny pin branches or whatever you want to call them and picked up some more spalting down on this end but hey maple's always good I like this this is cool and our blue staining along the edge here now absolutely and we have to flip the log here's why I can lower the clamp and still get another cut in. They got plenty down there to, to uh, get the clamp against. But this is set exactly with about a half an inch clearance on each side to the blade guides. And the reason I'm able to do that is it overhangs the stops here. You see these stops are underneath. And if I lower these so I can make another cut, the log is going to move over further unless I block it out. Put some blocks in it to keep it over there. So you can allow it to hang off the stops on this side and allow you to cut more or cut wider slabs with the, uh, the LT35. But I can't get these stops down any further. Like I said, if I do, <clears throat> it'll push this, push the log over too far and it'll hit the. Uh, I'm going to call it the inside blade guide towards the operator side. So we're gonna go ahead and flip it over and uh, should be able to have clearance if I flip it over. We'll find out when I get there. Okay. It's flipped over, but the way it's fallen out, I can't get it pushed out over top of the stops far enough. I'm gonna trim about a one inch piece off of this side. That'll leave me 
two cuts after that. I'm going to flip it back over, and yes, I'm going to have to block it. Like I said, I really didn't want to, but I don't have to block it to make it work. So, should have just lowered the stops and stuck some blocks in. But, thought I could get it this way. I guess not. Let's uh, get this cut made and do what we got to do to get this thing finished up. Okay, it's flipped over, but the way it's fallen out, I can't get it pushed out over top of the stops far enough. So I'm going to trim about a one inch piece off of this side. That'll leave me two cuts after that. I'm going to flip it back over, and yes, I'm going to have to block it. Like I said, I really didn't want to, but I don't have to block it to make it work. So should have just lowered the stops and stuck some blocks in. But thought I could get it this way. I guess not. Let's uh, get this cut made and do what we got to do to get this thing finished up. That's it. Turns out I didn't have to flip back over, just needed to trim that little end off over there. About one inch I had to trim off of that, so I was happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and flip these over, get a look at them, but hey. When I took that first cut off of this side, 
Notice a lot of spalting, so let's get down and take a look at it. All right, it's a narrow piece here, only about at the widest point, 12 inches wide, but gets as low as maybe six or eight down at this end. But very cool looking grain. Right in here is a end of a branch nub or something on this side. A little bit of bark inclusion, some curl, some black streaking through it. We got some spalting here and blue staining. Pick up another branch knot here, bullseye knot. Got this nice figure coming off around there. Spalting all down along this side. And again, spalting really picks up in here, looking good. And some nice bullseye figure down here. Very cool. Let's get this one flipped over and take a look at the next cut. All right, <clears throat> next cut in, starting to pick up that crotch figure bark inclusion on this end again. Pick it up a little more spalting as well down here. Really nice. Narrow pieces like this, incorporate them into something, I'm sure. Legs for a table. Those join two of them together, make one larger piece. All kinds of options with this. Spalting down along here, very nice. And still those double bullseyes down here. There's a bunch of spalting around them and the blue stain as well. Looking good. Let's get a look at the next one. All right, last cut off of this log, and look at all that spalting. Awesome. Absolutely beautiful stuff right there. Still solid. But yet... Nicely spalted. Picking up a little bit more crotch figure in here, but that's about all we'll get out of this. It all turned into bark inclusion for the most part. Get down into here into the boring stuff, I guess you call this, but still nice. Get the uh, bullseye there, a little bit of figure coming up around that. And little pinholes in this thing I've seen, there's some wormholes, I guess. The thing's been sitting around long enough. About two years since it's been taken down. It's an urban tree. No metal. Well, this was an upper branch, but the lower lower half didn't have any metal in it either, so. Very nice. Very nice. Those two bullseyes are starting to go away a little bit, but still looking good. Nice figure around them, spalting around it, blue staining around it. Awesome. All right, we're going to wrap it up. We've got one more small oak log to do. We'll probably uh, not get any video of that one. Small oak crotch to do. And we're going to hold off until we get the uh, red oak that's sitting out front. We're going to quarter saw that one. And it is November. What the day is today? Hang on a second. Checking the old watch here. 11-11, November 11th, 2018. And we are close to 1,500 subscribers. And we definitely appreciate all the support we're getting. And we have, I guess, basically in the last couple of weeks, we are darn near double what we had for subscribers. And it keeps growing. And we really appreciate that. Getting a lot of positive feedback. Some negative feedback. But, hey, that's to be expected. Can't make everybody happy. We just deal with it and we move on. But hopefully we keep getting uh, the content you guys are looking for. And being able to show you what you want to see, like this. This is stuff I like to see, and hope you do too. So I'm going to get this wrapped up, get this log stacked, and get on to the next one. But thanks, Gavin, everybody. Like, share, subscribe. Right now, hit the subscribe button, little bell. Click on that, you'll get a heads up on every time we post a new video or even a heads up on one we we've already posted i believe they'll back it up for the new subscribers but um click on those come back watch us and we'll see you out here next time okay thanks